Research in Western Australia's central and southern wheat belt is providing valuable information about the impact of stubble on the severity and duration of spring frosts. Grower Group and GRDC-funded trials by the Department of Agriculture and Food WA, conducted in 2012 and 13, indicated that producers should reduce stubble loads to about 2 tonnes per hectare by using burning or raking. A target of 2 tonnes per hectare is unlikely to increase frost damage and is what's required to maintain the stubble benefits of infiltration of opening rain and reducing wind and water erosion. This practice could lift crop yields by up to 0.8 tonnes per hectare in low-lying frost-prone areas. We think that stubble is actually providing an insulation layer to paddocks, so areas where stubble has been retained, it's actually acting like a blanket and stopping the warm air from reaching the soil surface. So if you remove stubble, what we're finding is that it's allowing the soil surface to heat up more during the day, which then dissipates more slowly at night, and provides that warm canopy temperature. To investigate the severity and duration of frost in high and low stubble loads, large-scale trials were set up last year in frost-prone paddocks at York, Wickerpen and Nyabing. Down at Nyabing we found that there was on average half a degree difference between retained stubble and standing stubble plots. So on one particular frost event the uh, standing stubble had a temperature of minus 2.4 degrees where the removed stubble had a temperature of minus 1.8. So that's half a degree difference. And although it doesn't sound like much in terms of a frost, that's quite a significant amount. And then looking at duration as well, the standing stubble had a longer time period below zero degrees compared to the removed stubble. And that's your difference between being severely affected by frost or not. So during September and October, the standing stubble treatment was below zero for around 50 hours across those two months, where the removed stubble was only below zero for 35 hours. We saw yield differences of approximately 800 kilos per hectare between the two treatments. That's a massive difference when you're talking about final yield of a farmer's crop. However, the trials found that the impact of very severe frost could not be avoided by stubble management. Although stubble does influence canopy temperatures when you're talking about minus one and minus two degrees, once you hit minus three and minus four degree temperatures, the difference in, inside the canopy temperature isn't enough to substantiate a yield benefit. So once you reach minus three and minus four, it doesn't matter what stubble treatment you have, you're still gonna be affected by frost. It's only really beneficial in that minus one to minus two temperature range. Rebecca says one aim of the 2014 stubble and frost research is to fine tune the recommendations about the optimum stubble load targets in different regions, seasons and seeding systems. If you're located in a low lying frost prone area, it may be beneficial to burn or remove your stubble in some way. So it doesn't have to be burning, but raking or cutting your stubble really low, um, any way to get a low stubble density. There's also other agronomic benefits of um, removing stubble. You've got uh, pre-emergent chemical benefits, so getting pre-em chemicals to the ground. You've got trash flow, the ease of seeding, and then there's also weed seed management compared to other things such as raking or retaining standing stubble, which can result in you know 50, 60 percent yield loss. It's quite an effective, cost-effective tool for managing frost. The GRDC funded trials also have the aim of investigating frost effects from seeding direction, type of stubble and stubble orientation, whether it is horizontal or vertical. York grain grower Charlie Boyle says frost frequency has increased on his property during the past decade. He hopes this research will fill some knowledge gaps. Whether the orientation of the seeding east, west or north, south or some alternative direction is better or not better. and. Um, yeah, it'd also be good, I've seen some preliminary information about um, tillage uh, resulting in less severe frost as well, you know, light tillage prior to seeding, so it'd be good to know if that was uh, the case as well. Exposure to frost risk has increased for Charlie and his family on the back of continuous cropping, increased cropped area and a trend towards drier spring weather. Growing oat and hay on highly frost-prone, low-lying areas of the farm is one tactic the boils use to manage frost risk. We cut a lot of wheat, frosted wheat, for hay. You don't make a lot of money doing that, but you cover costs. You can break even from a frosted wheat crop by cutting it for hay. 
Charlie says he hopes the 2014 stubble research will add further weight to the theory that stubble removal can help reduce the severity and yield impact of spring frosts. It would be good to quantify the benefits of it, to see if there is a tangible benefit in burning, whether, you know, when it comes down to frost, a, a difference of half a degree is significant. A lot of people think, oh yeah, whatever, it won't make, uh, won't change, but half a degree of frost could be the difference of three or four hours below zero in a frost event. So, uh, yeah, if they can firm up, firm up that data and that information, then it'll certainly um, spur a lot of people on, I think, yeah.